have you had a D&D game ruined by a player with only good roles? When I was in college, I played D&D with a group of friends, and I had a really bad time keeping characters alive. I mean, when it came to the clutch, I would invariably roll really bad numbers. When a character dies in the game, a system shock roll was done, meant to symbolize the shock to a character system that resurrection from death would imply. The odds of this happening were really low, 2%, which meant that if you rolled a 99 or a 100 with whichever die or dice you used, your character would die. One night was not going my way. My character failed at system shock roll, much to my dismay. The character was dead, D-E-D, -E dead. So I went about creating a completely new character. Now, if you've ever made a new character, it takes some time. After spending more time than I wanted to and watching the rest of the group play the game without me, I finally had my new character ready to go. Of course, having a level 1 character with everyone else being at least level 30 and forcing the DM to figure out how to add me into the story in progress really was annoying. In five minutes, my character was dead. Not from anything that happened in a fight, mind you, but because another character had been practicing with lightning bolts, fumbled, rolled a 1, and randomly struck my brand spanking new character. Apologetic, the player promised she would save me and cast a spell to save my brand new character. Yay! <laughs> Success! Roll the System Shock decision. Fail. Two System Shock fails in the same night? It was unheard of. I was starting to get a little perturbed at my luck, but the rest of the crew was becoming highly amused. In order to prevent another half-hour character preparation session, one of my friends loaned me a starter character, 5th level Thief, I think. Just don't get this one killed, okay? In my crew, at least, when a character died in-game, he really died, as in, unusable ever again. In the interest of time, I'll cut to the chase. This character also died, and this character also failed its System Shock roll. Three deaths, three failed System Shock rolls. Now here's where it gets interesting, aka, and then it got weird. I graduated from college and moved away from my friends to go on to grad school in another state. My friends continued to play and continued to play and continued to play. They still play, and we're now 25 years later. In order to tweak each other, whenever someone has to roll a System Shock test, they will say my name as the dice leave the hand of the other player. j And the roll will fail. A couple of years after I left the game, they were playing with a guy by the name of Mike, who was a notorious hothead. I'd played with him before, too. His character died, and someone shouted my name as he rolled the dice. It failed. By this point in time, the connection behind my name in the failed System Shock roll was legendary and causing some extreme superstition. Mike was so upset that he jumped and physically attacked the person who jinxed his role. Over the years, my friends have brought in new players. They work at the university, so there's always a new crop of players to come in who love the game, but who have never met me or heard of me. Except when it came time to roll a System Shock. About a year and a half ago, I took my wife back to the area to show her where I used to live, went to school, etc. It was the first time she had ever met someone from my college years. Patty, who now that I think of it might have been the owner of the Wayward Lightning Strike to my second character so many years ago, met us at a coffee shop and casually brought up that they still use my name in vain. The truly funny part is that these players, who weren't even alive when I was playing the game, don't believe that I exist. They think I'm a myth or an urban legend. They think that it's one of those Candyman kind of fairy tales that are used to threaten good behavior out of children. I swear, if you don't start playing right, I'll kill your character right now, and then I'll J-Mets you. Apparently, the threat works. Because the curse works. After all these years, people are still saying my name during System Shock rolls. The rolls are still failing, and it happens enough to carry weight as an actual threat. All on a 2% chance. But the players don't actually think I am real. Patty made me take a selfie with her so that she can show people I really exist. I should probably ask her if she ever showed them the photo. But, depending on your point of view, yeah. Several people have had D&D games ruined with consistent good rolls. I was that player. A friend was DMing his first campaign as a DM, and I was playing a rogue, a skill-based character. Though we were low-leveled characters, I had a handful of skills which had very high modifiers. How, you ask? Through a couple of factors. First, we rolled stats. I hate rolling stats. 
Not because there could be bad rolls, mind you. If a player rolls awful stats, most DMs are reasonable enough to recognize that not having any ability scores above 12 should constitute a re-roll of stats. No. The reason I hate rolling stats is the exact opposite. There's always one player at the table who rolled stats way too high. This is why in any campaign I DM, I always utilize a point buy system. Guess who was the guy who rolled three 18s, a 17, 16, and 14? Yep. Yours truly. So admittedly, my character's roles were already going to be very inflated from the get-go. Add to that, I was playing a rogue, which allows you to double your proficiency bonus on selected skills. I think as a level 2 character, I had a plus 11 for sleight of hand in stealth, and a plus 8 for a number of other skills. Unless I roll a natural 1, I'm going to succeed just about every check where I have proficiency in the skill. Now we start playing, and the story goes along as well as can be expected. I'm the only player, aside from the DM, who had any experience with D&D. My rolls were consistently good. Lots of high numbers. Not too many 20s, but 13 to 18 was kind of the norm. Let's just say the other players were getting frustrated when most of my checks were regularly above 25, and they are averaging, well, considerably less than that. So already, I'll admit that I was rolling very well, in addition to my rather high stats, much to the annoyance of the party, and more importantly, the DM. And then the day came. I showed up, the DM showed up, and one other player showed up. The rest of the party was nowhere to be seen. I was feeling mischievous. So I figured what the heck, I'll screw with everyone, because I can. My high rolls today were unusually high, even for me. Nothing below a 16. Keep in mind that I'm rolling all of these out in plain view. I'd already been accused of fudging my rolls, so I was very sure to roll everything in view of everyone. The rolls really were that good. So we're on top of a tower, and I started to just mess with the party and the NPCs with us. The DM got fed up with it and decided that the party should just move on, so the NPCs stood up and decided to leave. I stealthed to close and lock the trap door leading down into the tower, 19 on the dice, plus 11 for a total of 30 stealth, and I got caught. I still do not believe one iota that somehow one of the NPCs somehow managed to perceive that. I would bet very copious sums of money that the DM had enough of my shenanigans and just decided to fudge the roll. I wasn't happy with that, because come on, I rolled a 30, but whatever. I'll shorten the rest of the story simply by saying this. Swords were drawn. Remember, I'm a rogue. Not really combat oriented, to say the least, but we're in combat, and it's me versus a fighter, wizard, and bard. I have the highest initiative and rolled high again. I'm going first. I rolled to attack and... Natural 20. After confirming the critical, I rolled damage and nearly maxed out the possible damage doable. Times 2. And it's a sneak attack for some reason, by the way. The result? Scratch one fighter. Two left. The caster attacks and misses. The bard, who was the other player, passes his turn to simply wait things out. My turn again. I roll to attack, another critical, not confirmed critical damage, but still a hit, plus sneak attack damage, and it rolls maximum again, against a wizard who was already on low health. The result? Another NPC casualty, and one incredibly pissed DM. Admittedly, I should probably be dead, with all the antics I've pulled to this point, but I'm perfectly fine. The bard decides that to stop me from killing him, which I didn't intend to do, but he wouldn't have known that as a character, he was going to cast Sleep. I need a very low will save, I think it was somewhere around 12, and my wisdom modifier was plus 3, so a 9 or higher will succeed, in order to avoid the negative effect. I roll the dice. Natural 1. The DM looks at it, and looks at me, and looks back at the dice, and back to me. You're standing by the edge of the tower. You pass out, fall over the side, and die. Make a new character. I don't play with that group anymore. Yes, I probably deserved my recompense, but killing a character for no actual in-game reason beyond the fact that the DM is mad and a natural one has been rolled? I'm out. Goodbye, good luck, and good riddance. I don't think that group plays anymore. Not once. Oh, I've had my plans royally screwed up by players rolling really good, or thinking very far outside the box, but it's never ruined the game. 
One campaign I ran, the heroes were mercenaries for hire. They'd been contracted to steal the MacGuffin from the Orc Fortress. I'd planned it out meticulously. The fortress was on a hill, well defended. It overwatched the entire valley, impossible to approach unseen. Planned the garrison, the defense, everything. So the heroes are in the village below the fortress, and the cleric asks a question. That fort must have a lot of orcs. Where do they get their food? Oh, it's supplied by wagons. Okay, how often? You just got here, how would you know? Okay. They watched the fort for two weeks, and I had to start pulling numbers out of my ass. They passed every single gather information roll, even critting a few times. The fort was supplied by a dozen wagons every ten days or so. Then the cleric started talking to the rogue. That is not good. So they shopped around, gathered more intelligence, and eventually determined the favorite brand of beer for the orcs. They snuck into the warehouse and poisoned all of it. Every single barrel. Passed every fucking roll with ease. Then waited three weeks for all the orcs to die. Rolled right up and used the very supply wagons to steal not just the MacGuffin, not just everything that wasn't nailed down, but everything they could pry up too. Unconventional plan and superlative die rolls 100% pooched my plan. It was a great session. Long-term fallout, they had enough cash to buy a plot of land and build a home fort and no longer be murder hobos, and destabilized the several countries due to the vacuum of power, generating more business for themselves. They ended up as de facto lordlings. Derailed the entire freaking campaign. It was great. The whole game wasn't ruined, but we skipped a large part of it. In our DM, this was her first time DMing ever, and the group's first time playing ever, was extremely frazzled and pissed off because of it. Also, it was more of the group as a whole had great roles, not a single player. But here goes. It's the Lost Mine of Fendelver starter quest, and there's this part where we're supposed to be either captured by goblins or somehow go back to their base. It's in the first few minutes of gameplay, and we completely skipped it. It's supposed to introduce at least a third of the plot, but our characters were, I guess, too focused on their goals, and we as players were too focused on making things very difficult. So these goblins pop out of the woods and are shooting at us as we're traveling on the road, and we're supposed to fight them. Instead, we let one character, me, try to talk the goblins out of fighting us while another character loots a dead horse for meat, and it worked. So my character had relatively good charisma and persuasion stats, but also, I rolled nat 20s and high numbers like 17 and up with my bonuses. And the goblins finally stopped trying to fight us, but the pressure was on. How were we supposed to get them to leave us and not start fighting us again? And of course the DM is trying our hardest to get us to go with these goblins, but my rolls are too darn high! Finally, we come up with an idea. One of our players is a monk, so we decided he would convert these enemies into loyal followers of his church. The DM is shaking her head and clicking her tongue. She's not going to let us win this, but she lets me roll for her persuasion. Each of us players is watching in anticipation as I shake the die. It rolls. And it's a nat 20. And the DM is now frowning fiercely now. She's like, you're going to have to do it again to confirm. I'm not going to let you just end this like that. So I roll again. Nat 20 again. So we skipped a third of the plot and the DM was pissed, and we got some horse meat.